What's up guys, Teres Cousin here. Today we are reviewing code like a senior developer. I got here a repo from GitHub. I just typed randomly on GitHub React and I found the first repo that made sense for us to look at and I got it and we're gonna review it like I review the code when I work with my clients. What's in it for you is you're gonna get to see exactly how a senior developer thinks about code when reviewing it, how he thinks about code when working with a bigger application. This is a real world application and you're gonna get more out of this video than watching any tutorial, than taking any course because this is real. This is a real application and you're getting an insight into the years of experience that I have building complex applications. So make sure to watch until the end of the video to get all of the value from this review. And yeah, let's get to it. Cool. So this is the app. I'm not exactly sure 100% what it does, but it looks like it's a place that you can rent your home temporarily, kind of like an Airbnb. This is the landing page. They also have here, I was testing out some sort of search with a calendar, right? Very Airbnb like, and it's a simple application. I do not have the back end running because I only got the front end from this, but I managed to hack my way a bit to at least get this landing page to work. And then, uh, yeah, so like you see here, we have join zero cohomies. I'm pretty sure this would have a number if we had the actual backend, we don't, but it's fine. We're reviewing code. We're not actually reviewing functionality or bugs in the backend, just looking at the front end and the whole React experience. So let's look at the code. So this is the code for this. And the first thing that I wanna talk about is I just want to mention that first of all, this is an application that is in development, which means that a lot of the things that I may find in this review and talk about are things that will probably get fixed over time as this app is being developed, right? That That is just the nature of something being in development is that you do not, like nothing needs to be, nothing has to be perfect right off the bat. You can always optimize later because it's still in development. So keep that in mind. Let's actually look at some of this code. And the first thing that I wanna look at when dealing with a project is look at the folder structure here because that is really important. How you structure your folders is really going to determine how fast you're able to iterate when when developing this application. If you don't have patterns set up, if you don't have consistent ways of doing things, you're gonna get lost in it. It's gonna take more time to accomplish the same thing. And if you ever want to bring someone else into the team, into development, they're gonna have a harder time figuring things out because you don't have patterns established. So the first place that you establish those patterns is always with these folders. So right off the bat, judging from experience, I like this folder structure. You have here a folder for components, which is fine. These are all the components that are used throughout the app. That is good, we wanna see that. You have a folder for hooks, which is great because a React app usually will have a lot of custom hooks and you usually wanna put them in the folder, so that's super great. You have a pages folder, which is great, right? This to me intuitively tells me that these are the different pages of the application that a user can go to. That's great, usually these pages will be made up of smaller components from the components folder, so good. That is what we wanna see. We have a folder here for Redux, which is fine. I would have maybe put this in a folder called services because we might have other services alongside Redux to do this. But again, this is an in development app and perhaps now the only service that they use is Redux. So, you know, having it in its own folder is fine. So I'm not gonna comment on that. And then utils. Every project has a utils folder with some utility functions that are used. Some helper functions, formatting things, getting things, you know, whatever. Those are good. So right off the bat, these, this folder structure, I like, it's clear. I know where everything goes and I don't really have any problem with it. Cool, so now we have kind of covered the folders. Let's actually look at some of these files. What does this code actually do? And I'll start with the pages and I'll go to the main page, which is the home page. And right off the bat, this is very small which is good. This is what you want. Perhaps this is a little bit too small and that's fair enough, but usually you want to see small components because this means that, as you can see here, this component is made up of separate subcomponents. And it's good. That is what you want in React. That is how React was designed to be used. It's to break everything down into smaller subcomponents and then compose your UI with all of these components. The reason is that 
you usually want a component to only focus on one thing, right? It's the single responsibility principle. You want the component to only do one thing and makes it easier to maintain. If you ever want to change the component, you know where to go and you kind of work in this isolated environment. There's less chances to break something else while changing it. And also you can test these components much more easily. If they're isolated, you can run them in isolation and test them much easier. If you have a big component, you can't do any of that stuff. So this right off the bat, I really, really liked. So let's look at the Y, for example. Let's see what this is. So this has some styles here, which is fine. It's using styled components, no problem there. And then it is rendering the actual component here, which is not a big component. Uh, something to keep in mind is that this is a purely UI component. So it doesn't actually even need to be React. This could have been just pure HTML because it doesn't really do anything besides render some divs and, and text and whatnot. You might as well have statically rendered this as well, but this doesn't use Next.js. This doesn't use any of that. It uses completely create React app, which you know, it's fine, it's in development, you can always move and optimize later on. But yeah, this is a simple component. I like this, you know, it's great. It's not used currently anywhere else in the app, which is fine. And it's coming here to be composed in the home component, which is fine, no problem. If we look at search, for example, you see, this is what I like to see. This search, right, obviously it's called search, so it indicates to me that it has something to do with search, which is great, and it handles the search. Now, looking at this, it also handles the calendar that we saw, the date range picker, right? This thing here, it also handles that. I would have personally maybe done this in a separate component. Again, this whole idea of having one component do one thing, right? The search can handle just the search, just the input here, and then the calendar component can handle the calendar and you can pass the props and callbacks around. It usually makes for a more efficient application, but nonetheless, this is a very good step in the right direction because the search is isolated and it's part of the home here. So this generally looks fine. There's not that much to say. The only thing that I will say here is that there are no styles applied to any of these from the parent, from home. All of the styles are actually applied inside of this component, which, you know, in this case, if we're looking at the actual things that are rendered, the actual sections, there doesn't seem to be any style applied, like any spacing between this part right here and this part right here, it seems to be just stacked up without any styles, which is fine. However, if you wanted to have maybe some space in between here or some padding or something, it would be a better idea to do it inside of home and not inside of Y. And the reason is that if you ever want to reuse any of these components, search, apply anywhere else in the application, you want to reuse them without having styles that should belong to home, right? Let's say, for example, that in home, they should have a max width of 1,000 pixels, but in another screen, they should have a max width of 1,500, right? You want to have those decisions to be made by the respective screens, the parent, and not by the inner child component, because it then would get very messy because you would have to handle the case where it's on the home, it's on the other screen, change the, the max width, change the max width there, and it's generally less efficient to do that. The styles should always be dictated by the parent of how things are in its component, and the only styles that the child component should be considered of is the actual styles of inside its own self, right? So in this case, again, there's no real styles to apply here, so it's fine, but if there were, you would apply them in home and not in the Y or any other subcomponent. Cool, so now let's look at this components directory because honestly, I have no idea what is going on in there. But before we do that, I just wanted to mention that, did you know that over 85% of you watching here are not subscribed? It's really unfortunate because I think the value that you're getting out of this video is really huge and I think that deserves a subscribe. So if you're still watching right now and you haven't subscribed, please do hit that subscribe button because it really, really does help me out a lot. Cool, so let's look at this components thing. Initially, you would think, and rightly so, that this components folder holds components that are used throughout the app. Usually when I think of components, I think of buttons, text inputs, um, any kind of primitive component, right? Even a text component that may apply some styles to the text, anything like that, that you can use to then build any other component or any other screen in your application. But looking at this, this looks like it's a little bit different. So first of all, we have here this home navbar, right? Which, I mean, 
it looks it has a lot of state it, it looks like it's quite complex it's made up of a couple of links right it's i assume this part right here the stay is about sign in i assume that's what this is right now why is this in components right because this is something that belongs to the home or even if you wanted to reuse it you would not reuse it inside of smaller components right this is what i call like a rich component right it's more than just a simple component that does one thing i mean sure it's the home navbar does that but it's made up of small components right it's not primitive it's made up of separate subcomponents as well so what i would do instead is i would create maybe another folder called screen components and I would put that in here along with any other component that is bigger, richer, and even so can be reused across different screens. The reason is that you want to have your components folder be only primitives, only buttons, only text inputs, only text, right? Like small things that do not re-render separate subcomponents it's easier that way you can think about them as like your ui building blocks like the lego blocks they used to build the ui and with those you might make a screen right like the home screen which may have some larger components inside like the home navbar that can be reused maybe you want to have a separate navbar component that is reused across different screens it would make more sense at least to me to put that in the screen components folder instead of putting that in the components folder right or you might if you want if you really want to have everything in this components folder you might separate them inside of it like inside of the component you might have something like ui here where you would put all of those components and then maybe your bigger components go outside of that again this is just a matter of preference but i really feel that there's value in having a separate folder for these two different types of components because they really are two different types of components and now looking at this ui thing right that's what i initially thought this was when i looked at this but it's actually not if i open this beds here we can see that this is just an svg this is an image, if you didn't know what an SVG was. This is an image, it's not an actual component. Sure, it is a React component in the sense that it uses React and it renders a React component, but I would more so put this in its own separate folder called assets because it is a photo, it is an asset. It is not a component in the sense that we're thinking here. It is not a UI block that we use to build our UI. It is a simple image. So this, I think, is in the wrong place. And then we have this UX here, which honestly I've never seen in any application. And if you open it, it is a loader here. It is a three dots loader. But that is strange because we also have a loading three dots here, which is literally the same component besides this margin here is slightly different, which I'm not sure why, right? So again, coming back to a new developer that potentially is gonna join in on the project to work on it, they will have a hard time understanding what really is going on with this application if you have two different components that do two different things and the only difference is a style, right? Again, this goes back also to what I was talking about. Don't put separate styles in the actual component if it depends on the parent, right? So this, I honestly have no idea what's going on. I would have to go and ask someone to kind of walk me through who wrote this, why did they write it like this, what's the kind of purpose, and then even try to like combine them into one and try to figure out the solution, a pattern that you, makes this whole thing a lot more clear, right? Because right now, again, I have no idea what's going on. And just to finish off the components, there's one file in particular that really stood out to me and it is this list address file. And honestly, first of all, these styles here, I get it. It's styled components, right? I get it, but I would have preference either place them at the bottom of the file because usually when you open a file that is a component or something you want to see the component first not the styles so i'd put that at the bottom and then or sorry i would also put it in a separate file right you don't have to some people prefer the separate file some people prefer the same file but at the bottom of the file right but definitely not here at the top so that's one thing the second thing is man if you look at First of all, how many styles is this for like the list address, right? And then what is this? Div1, Div2, Div3, Div4, Div5, Div5 header, Div4 column inner, Div4 column. Like, how can you 
understand this and it goes further div 6 div 7 div 8 div 9 div 10 it just goes further further and further and honestly i have no idea what's going on i'm not even sure why you would need all of these divs here i'm not even sure like if you look at div 4 like what is it it has some styles div 5 has some styles as well how is anyone going to figure out their way when it's done like this honestly if i was reviewing this code right now and i saw this i would simply write kill the page delete the page start over again because this is honestly unacceptable and yeah other than that honestly like this is a pretty solid app right the, the things that i mentioned again it's in development so things could change right the point of this video was to kind of go over a real application sure it's in development but still it's enough there that you can kind of see the and, and get some insights from it and you know just learn about react that way learn about react using a real world application and thinking about this in terms of a real world application cool so there you go that was i think the first kind of code review that is done on youtube it's at least the first one that i've done i really enjoyed it if you did as well make sure to leave a like to this video and also if you want your code to be reviewed here on the channel, you can join the Discord. There's a link in the description down below. Join it and go to the code review channel on Discord and post your code, post your repo or post like some snippet of your code for me to review. If it's interesting enough, which means if there's, if I think there's enough value that can be gotten out of it for others, I will make a video about it like I did here. Again, this was not a code that was submitted to me. This was code that I literally ripped off of GitHub. But again, you got value from this video. And if you want me to review your code, for you to also get the chance to have your code reviewed by me and for others, if you think that they can learn some, something from it, go into Discord and post it there. So yeah, if you enjoyed this video, if you got any value from it whatsoever, make sure to subscribe, right? Because it really, really does help me out a lot. It shows me that you're enjoying the content and that you want more of these. And I definitely plan on making more. So yeah, my name has been Darius Kozlin. This is Kozlin Solutions. Thank you again so much for watching and I will see you all in the next one. Ciao, ciao.